Welcome to Changing the Sales Game podcast on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. Thanks for tuning in today. So every week as you tune in, I hope between my guests and I, we share some just cool tips and strategies that hopefully you implement immediately. That means right after the show, uh, because the implementation, you know how I feel, action, right, is where we create such magic and results in our life, whether it's business or personal. Uh, Also, to help you on this journey of just change, right, of being a heart-centered leaders out in our communities, I have my free gift for you, which is my communication style assessment. You guys have been listening, you know, you get two reports, the high, what is my superpowers, I share that with you, and then I also shine a light on your lowest score, which is our blind spots, which is probably more important to really learn and examine so that we can minimize those and always build from a position of strength. So go to my website, whitmanassos.com slash CSA, and that is my free gift to you. Uh, Today's quote is by Gregory Chiodi, and Gregory says, marketing is enthusiasm transferred in the customer, to the customer. So for any business owner or any marketing exec that, that listens to the show, do you agree that when you have that right messaging, your marketing can actually skyrocket success of your company or organization? You know, marketing is a critical piece of, I think, any business plan or business model. And most people think that marketing and sales are the same thing, which makes my head want to explode because they are not. They are two very different things. They are married, but sales is one thing and marketing is another. And Connie Whitman stays in her lane of sales, not marketing. Well, today, of course, I have an amazing guest. She is back, I think for the second time, uh, my good friend and amazing marketing uh, uh, person, brilliant person is Melanie Hershorn. And Melanie is going to help us understand marketing and how to implement a plan that actually gets you results. Now, Melanie is a digital content creator on a mission, like I am on a mission, to empower female entrepreneurs to land more clients and conquer their con- their uh, content creation. Um, uh, she believes that clear, concise, and perfectly chosen words help businesses not only attract, but also nurture their ideal clients and customers. Now, small business owners since 2012, Melanie understands the entrepreneurial journey and knows firsthand the challenges and dedication it takes to markets one to one owns company. She also has extensive uh, experience in the content creation world, having worked as a uh, print, that's so funny, print, do we do that anymore? Radio and TV journalist, and as a PR specialist in Hollywood. Please help me welcome my good friend and just amazing guest, Melanie, to the show. So Mel, thanks for being on again. Thank you, Connie. I am so excited to be here. Yeah, we always have such good conversations. And if if you guys are watching this on YouTube, as I said, sales and marketing are two different things. Melanie did the, you know, the brain, you know, out with the hands just for those listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So, yeah, two very different things. Now, first question, why do we need to have a steady stream of content for our brand? Okay, how much time? Right. right? I know, sister. (laughs) Tell me. Okay, so we need content because if we are an online business, which the majority of us are these yeah. days, given what's going on around us, you don't have a brick and mortar store that people can walk into, pick up something, touch it, feel it, ask questions about it, put it down, walk over to the next thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All we have as your first impression and every impression thereafter is your content. And I'm not saying you have to come up with new things and reinvent the wheel every single day of your life. That's not what I'm saying. I would never advocate for that because marketing is a part of your business, but you still have to have a business. Yes, exactly. (laughs) But in order for people to get to know you, to get to like you, and to get to trust you, and to want to buy what it is that you are selling, they have to see you. You have to build your authority, and the way to do that online is through your content creation. 
Yeah, and it's funny because you can repurpose content. So I'll just give you a great example, and it's a shout out to a company that I use. They're called Podscribe. Um, they have a wonderful young man, Eugene, who's just awesome customer service too. So not only do they have the service, but the back end piece when you have questions, just tremendous. Um, so Podscribe, what they do is every week, my shows, it gets loaded to Apple Podcasts, all those things, but it goes directly. Podscribe pulls it for me. I don't have to do any extra steps. And the really cool thing, and I know you work with authors, so authors listening, I want to, this is a wonderful tool for you guys um, to help with content creation, but also potentially to help with a book. So Podscribe uploads all of my shows, right? And because my other show, this is my second show, my other show I've been doing for, I have well over 200 episodes, they uploaded all of my backlog as well, which is fascinating that they did that. Again, seamless, I didn't have to do anything. Net net, every week my show gets uploaded. What I can do if I'm writing content or I'm doing a chapter, like let's say I, I write another book, I could go into the, they have a search engine within their platform and I could put in con, conflict management conversations or uh, heart-centered sales um, leadership, whatever my chapter's about, and it will pull up just the shows and highlight in the transcripts that actual content. So how easy is that as a tool, right, for what you help people do to zero in, this is my topic in my blog or the topic for my podcast or a topic in a chapter of the book. And you can use all of the podcasts you've been on or your own podcast and transcribe them. Now, there's a lot of free resource services out there, but they don't have that search component, which is just a brilliant tool. And it's such a, a low, low end um, price point. Well, I'm doing a pitch for Podscribe here, but the, the reason reason I'm doing that is because everybody gets inundated and fearful of content and there's resources out there that can help you manipulate and repurpose things um, for ve multiple venues or platforms, right? So that's just another great tool. And, and if you didn't know, Mel, I, again, I could do an intro to Eugene. It's, it's just a great company. Wonderful. Yeah, that is a great example of a resource. I love that. Now, there might be people listening or watching going, but I don't have a podcast. And in that case, that's where I come in. Because often when I work with people, they've written a book, or at least they have the outline of the book. Yep. And we take that book and we make that the base of your marketing for now until the cows come Love home. it. Because that's a lot of content in a book. It's everything. And you've birthed a baby. I mean, you know, you're a published yeah. author. You, you've, I mean, how long did it take you to write your book? A long time. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to say years, but yeah, it took years. Yeah, exactly. And then you finally put it out there in the world. And a lot of times people go, okay, well, I got to focus on the launch. So I'm going to launch it. And then they go, oh, wait, now what? That's exactly right. How do I, how do I get people to buy the book? And, and further than that, because... It isn't always about the book sales. In fact, sometimes it's not about the book Absolutely. sales at all. It's about it's about the book as a marketing tool. That's right. So that when, you know, when Connie's standing on a stage and she says, oh, and you can purchase my book at the back of the room, that's one more step in her customer journey that's right. so that people can get to know her better. And then when they say, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing with sales. I want to be a heart-centered salesperson. I have to call Connie Whitman <laughs> because they They've seen you talk, they've read the book, they've been on your site, they've seen the content, they've listened to your podcast, they're like, oh my God, I need more Connie Whitman in my life. And that's really what the book does. It allows everybody to have more Connie Whitman in their life. And I have a question for you. This is, fa <laughs> well, by the way, 100%, what Melanie is saying, the book, guys, I am not getting rich off the book. That wasn't why I wrote the book. I really wrote it as a resource for people who maybe, especially I wrote it during COVID, that I knew money was tight. And I thought, wow, I have all this knowledge. Let me share it. You know what? And I make a couple of bucks on the side, but it's that authority builder that you just get out in a bigger way for people really to see who you are and what you're about and do they and it's an it's an easy price point to say do i like this person to follow and continue to build a relationship even if it's online um so the book is just such a great entry point what made you now i know recently you shifted and niched down into working with authors why why that transition for you well it was the, they came to me mm. and 
it's funny when the universe does yeah. that. I, you know, these women that I work with, they are authors, but that's not, they're, they're not necessarily, I'm an author. It's more of, I have a brand and the book is part of it. So they started coming to me because what it was happening was I was working with anybody who had a service-based business and it's kind of broad. And niching down really helps you pinpoint your messaging yes. even further. Yes. And I love reading other people's books. It's so exciting when I get a new client and then I get to, you know, I say, okay, I need to read your book now. And so then I read the book and I'm going, wow, they're so talented. You know, it's, it's amazing. And I'm sure you feel this too, that when somebody writes a book, it elevates their status. It does. And all of a sudden, they're a published author. And it's just, you know, you walk down the street, how many authors do you really know? It's cool. I mean, maybe you, maybe, you know, maybe you're, you know, you call a friend from high school and because they just published a book and it's all exciting, right? Because you're like, wow, you published a book. And, you know, people would always say, oh, well, books are so passe because we have the internet. But, you know, Amazon and Kindle figured out a way to make that. I mean, Audible wouldn't be what Audible is without books, Ain't right? That's the so. truth. Yeah. Again, see the platforms change too, which is really important. It's funny when I published my book. Um, you know, you did. We did a big media push, right, to hit number one international bestseller. And it's tr it's true. All those people on Facebook that you've been friends with for the years, and maybe you, you just reach out on birthdays and maybe the holidays, right? I'm thinking of you, kind of thing. My inbox or my Facebook and LinkedIn and email blew up. Um, people like, I'm so proud of you that maybe I haven't spoken to in years. You know, we've corresponded again on Facebook. So it's just such a nice community builder too, to allow people to shine with you, right? When you have this amazing thing happen in your life. So author, being an author is, is kind of a cool thing. Um, now, all right, let's get back to the content piece. So I've, I've created this book right now. Really, there's, there's a tremendous amount of content. How does the author mine it? Which is what, that's Melanie's zone of genius. But how do we mine that and know what should be a post? What should I talk about on a podcast, right? If I'm invited or a summit or speaking things. How do you mine that? Okay. Well, I mean, the best way to start is to look at the chapters you've written. Because you've created sections for yourself already and you know look at what you have been doing and who your ideal client is in general mm -hmm. and say what do they need to hear from me Wh just like you said about my zone of genius what is your zone of genius what wonderful information can you provide that you've probably already written in the book that will help people that you can meet them where they're at yeah and maybe it's your first chapter. Maybe your first chapter is an introduction to you. So why don't you talk about yourself online? I know a lot of people, a lot of people think it's, you know, they don't want to post pictures of themselves. They feel like it's narcissistic or whatever. But eventually, after working with me, you realize it's not, it's not narcissistic. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's good. People want to see your beautiful face. They want to meet your eyes. They want to see That's that. That's right. And. And people want to know why you do what you do because they want to know what your mission is yeah. because then you can enroll them in your mission. For example, my mission is to help people who've written a book, who have a brand, that they are trying to make this world a better place, that I get to help them do that. It's cool. I'm helping people who are making to, to make this world a better place. That's why I get up in the morning with my makeup all over my face. My son is jumping on top of me. I've got a dog licking me and an alarm blasting. And I still, I don't roll over and put the covers over my head. I say, okay, let's get up because I know I have a mission to fulfill right. every single day. And I know you feel exactly the Absolutely. same way. You got to love what you do. What if, you know, just what people listening and thinking, oh, a book, right? Because I, I mean, I felt that way several years ago, a book. What drugs are you taking? Like, that ain't ever going to happen, right? So even if you haven't written a book, or maybe there's a little voice as people are listening, thinking a book. Hmm, I wonder. 
how can you start to find content, even if you don't have a book, but you want to, you, you have a business or you're a marketing executive, whatever. How do you find the right content? And then uh, the part B to that question is, can you take that if you don't have a book and create a book from that content? Almost re, like re, re-engineer it, right? Absolutely. You can repurpose anything you've ever done and create a book. I mean, look at Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City. She took all her columns and made a book. Yeah. And if you've written blog posts over the years or if you've had a podcast or like you said, if you've been guesting on other people's podcasts, maybe you just have a a one sheet, a speaker one sheet that talks about the topics that you can talk on. Why don't you start there? The thing is that we get so in our heads and we think that everybody else knows everything that we're talking about. You know, you probably talk about, I know you have this wonderful system of sales that, cause I've read all, I read all your emails cause they're fantastic. And you're welcome. And you probably think that everybody knows that system, but that we don't know that system. (laughs) And, and I know I've read it at least three times and I still can't remember it. I think I even took notes on it once, but it's still not in my head. But that is something that's yours. It's your proprietary awesomeness. And that kind of thing works. And, you know, so often we get caught up in that, well, it has to be X number of words. It has to be X number of chapters. But does it? <laughs> I mean, with self-publishing options today, does it really Hey, you know what's funny, Mel? I want to comment on that because aren't you fine? Like my book, I intentionally made it that somebody literally could sit down in three or four hours if they chose and could have read through that book to get and and take notes through it. I had worksheets in there that they could have done, um, literally could have could read it in in a couple of hours because for me. Okay, you learned it. Just go and apply something, right? And that's where you get the results. So I think I am more attracted to shorter books, especially lately because I'm so busy building the business, right? Now that I have two divisions within my company, those short books I enjoy because I know I will actually get through them and learn something and be able to apply it or change something in my life, right? So are you finding that with authors too that... that it doesn't have to be, you know, war and peace, right? It really could be a shorter uh, exchange. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm currently outlining my book. I love it. It's scary. I- and it's not going to be a tome. It's not going to be a tome. It's going to be short to the point. Part of that is, like, think about it. When we do things that are shorter and we can check them off our list, that's so much more fulfilling. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, it really does. And then you're more likely to actually take the action, and, which is what we're all about. And, and I want to ask you another question. So if I haven't written a book and I'm now that we're chatting and people are thinking, hmm, a book, maybe that's the next thing or maybe that's what I'm going to do in, in next year, whatever. How do you how do you help people kind of figure out what the outline of the chapter should be just based on podcasts they've been on or speaking events that they've done or if they're training, you know, if they're, they have courses that they're training, how do you kind of help them define that, tighten that up a little bit? Because it's still content. All right. It is. Well, that is not what I, I mean. I have never helped somebody write a book, so I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. That's what amazing book coaches are yes, for. And I know a they couple. can help. Yeah. People. yeah, exactly. And they can help you take all the mess flying around in your brain and and, you know, eject a beautiful thing on paper. And yeah, <laughs> and you know, what's funny, though, you said something and, and uh, yeah, the, I, I know amazing uh, book coaches, Elizabeth Johnston, Rochelle Weissman. I mean, they're just brilliant at what they do. But you see, this is the importance and, and why I love doing the podcast, because that was just an important tip. Right. We have people that their zone of genius is actually helping you take all of that content that maybe isn't organized in your own mind and be able to take it and pull it together and actually create a book. Then you hire Melanie to say, okay, now I have this, the book, what do I do with it? How do I get it out there, right? How do I leverage it from a marketing perspective? So here's another question, right? I have this book, I have all these things. Should people focus more on the social media or on the email marketing? What's your philosophy with that? Because they're both important, but where, like, how does that fall? 
Well, they can be done together. You can put the same thing out on social media that you're putting in your emails. It can be identical. And that's what I do. I, for example, today, I have a post that went out on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and also in an email. And people are loving it. And if they see it twice, it just reinforces your message. Yes. You don't have to worry about wearing the same thing to prom as somebody else and getting everybody getting upset because, you know, oh, she's wearing my dress. It's not like that. It is you just keep reinforcing your message. You know, there are people who will post the same photo on Instagram every month and no one notices. Think about how much noise we have coming yes. at us. So if I'm going to post the same post everywhere on the same day and send it out in my email too, that's just reinforcing my message. And today my message is to be, to have a clear message. <laughs> that's what <laughs> Today's message is about having a clear message. And because if you don't have a clear message, nobody's going to buy from you Sorry. because they're not going to have any idea what you're talking about. And they're not going to sit and wait to figure it out. They're just going to keep going. So, but to answer your question about social media and email marketing, equally important, but with a caveat that social media, we do not own our social yeah. media followers. Yeah. So if we want to be posting something that's going to upset Facebook. I know somebody who posted something that upset Facebook and they locked her out for 24 hours. And it was devastating to her because she has, I mean, she has a very robust email list, which is great, but still, I mean, she had planned to do things on Facebook and it was, it was very stressful. And I know people who have had their uh, Instagram accounts just shut down and that's it. And so you have no way of reaching those people afterward. But if you have their email addresses, you always have a way to reach them. And if they unsubscribe, that's okay. Sayonara, you weren't my ideal client that's right. anyway. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, we need to be on the social media. We have to play the game. Um, just be careful because you don't own that content. They can shut you down. The algorithm changes all the time. So the, the, the lack of control is, I'm not saying don't do it. We have to do it. But getting email lists there and the people that stay with you, that's really your people, that's your community. And you're trying to build a community of like-minded people that we can share resources as well and build those relationships beyond the online realm. So yeah, I, I agree with you uh, on that so much. The other thing I wanted to comment, um, because like my show, right, it posts on Apple Podcasts. So people, some people subscribe through their podcast app on their phone. I also mm -hmm. send it to my email for people who don't necessarily uh, listen on their phone. They like to listen on their computer, right? Some people do use Chrome or whatever. So I send an email mm -hmm. and then I also post it on my LinkedIn and social media because people, that's the other thing you think, oh, they're seeing the same thing on the same day. I try to, you know, offset the days a little bit, but people digest content differently so it's not like you're bombarding them um you know in the uh, with the same message that they're seeing it maybe in six different places it's not the case like i'm right. i'm on facebook and i check it maybe once a day i'm not one of those scrollers who gets lost in facebook i just don't have the time i'm more on linkedin that's where my people are um that resonate with me so you know i'm, I'm a little bit more active there so it, people are, are digesting your stuff differently than you think and the other point i wanted to make is i think human our attention span is down to six seconds so even we're goldfish. we're goldfish, I think it's less than a goldfish, which is just so tragic. That's such a tragic narrative just on its own. But so it's sad. so sad. But the other thing is, like you said, where you can repost it a month later. So if you sometimes you can have a quarterly message and you reuse that content on the different platforms. Um, and then next next quarter, maybe dig in a little bit differently with a little bit different same message because our messaging messaging has to be clear. But maybe you're just focusing on a little bit different detail. So again i think we i think melanie people make marketing and again i'm not a marketing person but the clarity of the message is the most imperative thing and then how you get it out there there's so many options that it's easier than people think and you can repurpose it which i think people are, are, are don't realize either right 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to your point, I just want to mention that just because we posted it on Facebook today doesn't mean that we will that our followers will see it today. That's right. If they see it, it could be three days That's from right. now. You know, I was reading something, something tragic happened to somebody. Everybody else posted, everybody else responded, but it only showed up in my feed this morning and it happened three days ago. And, you know, so you never really know when people are going to see things. That's true. So, or if they will see things, because just like our six seconds of, of attention span, it's something like, you know, between two and 6% of your followers are going to see what you post, which is really not a lot of people. It's not. Isn't that funny? So that's why if there's one tip I can leave you with today, it's that the engagement piece is so important because if you're reaching out to people and you're giving them that back and forth. So if somebody comments on your Facebook for, or let's go back to LinkedIn because that's your jam. Somebody comments on your LinkedIn. They say, wow, Connie, I really loved this podcast episode. You could heart it and say, thanks. Or you could heart it and say, thank you. What was the biggest takeaway for you? That's right. And then you have that conversation, right? And that's how you meet new people. That's how you grow your community and show people that you're not a bot. That's right. You're a human. Uh, Yeah. And you know what's cool is on LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, a little different than my email, like I'll put listen to today's episodes and whatever, like I'll say, what was your, uh, what new content or what new marketing approach are you choosing? And then people respond and I'm like, yes, I do that too. Or I never thought of that. Love that idea. Great idea, Mary, for sharing that. Right. So that's where the engagement, if you throw out a question, sometimes people actually respond. Right. Yeah. And that, and and then you respond to them with another question. That's right. And it's, it, it really, but it's lovely because it makes me excited when, when people do respond to something and they message me because I check my own stuff. I don't have somebody do that for me. I message back because to me, business is personal and that I take that seriously. Right. So I do respond and I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm just know if I respond to you, I'm like in my seat going, Woo-hoo-hoo! like I'm very excited <laughs> that someone messaged me about an episode that they found valuable. Oh, like to me, like the, the fireworks are going off, right? I'm just so darn yeah. excited. Yeah, I love it. It's like they just gave you the biggest hug from, yes, from their cell phone. Totally, totally. Because you're making a difference yes, in somebody's that's life. That's so much fun. I, so now I want to go back one little step. Email list. What is your mm-hmm. best recommendation or tip to help people grow that email list so that we do have a little bit more control than the, the typical social media platforms? Okay. It's one answer and it's to have a lead magnet and if you don't know what a lead magnet is you might have heard it called an opt-in or a freebie it's basically a free thing that somebody can download and it is the first 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 step on your customer journey so it's like the super low hanging fruit you know you ask yourself well what do people ask me all the time and then you answer it in this free thing it could be a pdf it could be a video it could be a quiz And when you give them that answer, you give them a quick win. And then they're like, oh, Connie totally just showed me how to do this. Yeah. What's the next step? What else can I learn from Connie? Oh, she has a book. Oh, I need to get this book. And then you read the book. Oh, this book was great. I need to join her program. When's the next time it's open? And that's how it goes. So in between that, with the with the lead magnet, they download it. But if you don't do anything after, then you've thrown it out the window. So I implore you to have what's called a welcome sequence, yes. which is three to seven emails that go out after the person downloaded yes. the freebie. And it's something like 40% of companies don't even bother. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I, I, I might be wrong on that statistic or it might be that they don't send something out within the next within like the first three weeks or whatever it is. It's like they're just you're throwing money down the toilet. And that to me is sacrilegious. Yeah. So so nurture those leads. And and, you know, if I, I I cannot say enough how important it is to have that sequence going. And, yeah, people are going to unsubscribe and that's OK. But then there are people who are going to stick around and you're going to be showing them that you are the go-to expert. That's what all this content does. 
all this content that you right. put out, whether it's on social media, email, podcast, whatever you're doing, your book, it shows people that you know who your ideal client is, you know how to solve the problem that keeps them up at night and that you are the person that they need to call to fix their problem. Yeah. And I I just want to comment on that. So I have a couple of lead magnets, depending on what giveaways and things that I'm part of. And the one I start with my show, right? It's my communication style assessment. That's one of my lead magnets. It's a wonderful gift, right? And doesn't mean that everybody who takes it ends up hiring me. It's so not the case. But if I could bring that free content that's vital and important for them in their life, both personally and professionally, it's a tool that you can really leverage from both both perspectives, right? Not just on the professional realm. I, I'm excited about that. I want people to be able to use something I've created and be excited about it and be able to use it in their life. To me, that's the win, right? But then they, then you're on my email list. Some people unsubscribe. That's okay. If, if you're getting too many emails from me, I'm not hurt by that. I understand we get inundated with emails. And if the content isn't relevant to you, that's cool too, right? It's never a hard feeling. But the people that do follow my email, do follow my podcast, it's, it's um, and I just share a success story, Mel, to show the sequence of what you're saying. So for instance, last year, I did a lot of speaking events. I was in a lot of giveaways ways. A lot of people took my communication style assessment. My list grew, right? So I've been nurturing and talking and engaging and now they're on social media and however else who bought my book, who didn't buy my book. And so I ran a a workshop, a free workshop that I I was giving, uh, eliminate the five layers of buyer's resistance, right? To make sales just such an easy, um, loving thing versus that icky, right? And several people signed up for my nine week class. At the end, I put my offer and I'm, I'm very honest, right? I'm saying I'm going to give you an offer at the end. Some of you are going to love it. Some of you, you're not ready for it. It's all good, right? Learn what you can from me. 39 years of experience. Well, people bought. And then in the first class, I said to them, how did you find me? Like, I, I, I've never met you before. I'm so excited to get to know you. We heard you speak last year at XYZ. We started following you on your email. We started listening to you on the podcast. Then you had this workshop. We were like, wow, it's like Connie's always talking directly to me. My messaging was good for them. They they came to the workshop. They bought my program. They heard me a year before. It works because you're authentic. And here's the thing, too, and why I think I love podcasting, and I think every business owner should at some point start their own podcast or at least get on podcast, because it's really hard for you to not be you over and over and over again, right? And I, I host two podcasts a week. So people get me. You you I am what I am. I cannot put on a pretense for that many hours, right, to try to fool someone. So my messaging becomes super clear and authentic, but people truly feel me because of this. I'm in their ears, right? It's a very intimate um, venue to connect with people. It is. It is very intimate. And, you know, but I think that anything that we do on social media should be intimate. And I think that that gets lost. Often I'll get an, uh, an email from like email marketing and it'll say, hey, guys, how many people do you think are opening up my email? Just me. So address it to me. Absolutely. Or, uh, you know, you scroll social media and people are speaking to the plural. It's just me reading it. So talk to that's me. Right. Talk to your client. And, and you know, the only time that that's okay is if you are on television. Because people gather around a television together to watch. So it's one to many. I love that. But if you're on the radio, podcast, email, social media, it's one to one. So always remember that because how often do you meet somebody and there's something about them? You're like, wow, they made me feel like I was the only person in the room. They made me feel special. Well, with your social media, with your email marketing, with your podcasting, you have the opportunity to make your ideal client feel special yeah. too. And it, it is. It's, and I'm sorry. And again, this, this is how I've lived my whole 39 year career, 20 years in business, right? Business is personal. And if you don't care about your client, what, like that's the icky, right? Stop, just stop, do something else. But if you really come from this place of care and love and respect, right, you're, you, it's personal. It's got to be personal. Um, otherwise, again, you're not, I know that word authentic is so overly used, but people, people get you if you're, if you're 
being false or a fake, you know, the big fake, um, you're superficial, right? I'm, I'm so not into the superficial stuff. Like people that enter my orbit, you really become my people, my community, um, because people matter to me. That's, that's my life. That's my life's work, right? That's your life's work. So the messaging is, is really, really clear. We're out of time, but Melanie, holy moly, I think we covered a lot in this episode. And I know if people, if you guys have questions, just please, please, please email Melanie directly. Um, you can email her at melanie at vipdigitalcontent.com. Go to her website, which again is a wealth of information, and you could just go to vipdigitalcontent.com. Again, check out Melanie, check out all her stuff. Um, just such a, a, a great amount of information uh, that we shared today, and I hope you all found value in wherever you are with your business career, if you're thinking about public all of those things. I hope that um, Melanie and I shared some some cool tips for you that you could apply today, right? It's always about, all right, now, now comes the work. Uh, everyone listening, you need to go and start to implement one of the tips. One, that's all you have to choose is one. Uh, Mel, thank you for being on. Always so much fun to hang out with you, see you, and just this exchange of, of ideas and sharing uh, tips is, is awesome. And I, that's why I love my podcast. I love hosting it. So thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Connie. This was awesome. Yeah, always a pleasure. And I hope you will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover that no matter where you are in your business or career, coming from a place of being heartfelt, um, from hopefully a heartfelt leader, um, and hopefully a heartfelt sales leader, uh, I hope that the show provides those tips and strategies again for you to implement immediately. It, the action is where the magic happens. I truly believe that. And I hope that I am a resource for you to create that a a action in your life and that change in your life. And I wish you all an amazing, inspired week and I'll see you all next week. Thanks again, Mel, for another great show.